In this hour, may we be open to a rededication of treasured friendships, a renewal of spirit. May we relinquish the worries and anxieties of the past week, if just for this hour, and regain our strength through this community of faith. The chalice lit among us is a beacon, a beacon of hope in a world of crisis, a beacon of possibility made manifest in community, a beacon of warmth through our interconnections, a beacon of light illuminating our shared wisdom, a beacon of connection by our being together. Good morning, all. Good morning. And welcome to East Rose Fellowship. Uh, to those of you both in the chapel and online, if anyone is here for the first time, a special welcome to you. We are very glad you are here. My name is Jan Applin Curtis. I'm your worship leader this morning. Our guest speaker is Reverend Ann Clare. She recently wrote her memoir, and her reflection today, titled Your Spiritual Resilience Toolkit, is based on a chapter in this book. Anne's inspirational words offer both practical advice and spiritual encouragement through stories of following in her mother's footsteps and developing resilience as her superpower. Let's take a moment now to greet each other. But first, let's turn around and look at the camera near the clock on the back wall and wave to our friends viewing at home. Yes. 
There'll be more time for visiting after the service ends. Right now we wanna acknowledge the lands where our fellowship gathers and that are home to our widespread communities. These lands were the traditional village sites of the Multnomah, Wasco, Wishram, Cowlitz, Kathlamet, Clackamas, bands of Chinook, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Malala, and many other tribes and peoples who made their lives here. We thank these original caretakers of this land and their descendants who are among us still. In peace, may we share this land and honor one another. Now, we just wanna give a, a quick heads up to those of you online. Um, if you have a joy or concern to share coming up in the service, please write it in the chat online. So at the time that occurs in the service, they can bring it up and it can be shared. Now please join and stand as you are able in singing our opening hymn, I Brought My Spirit to the Sea in the Gray Hymnal, number four. I'm going to play it through once because I'm, I don't think that you know this one. It's really short. The purpose of the church is to encourage all who gather there to grow more generous in spirit and in action. This is the great end of all the world's faith traditions, to bring us closer to the divine acts of creation and compassion. We now take an offering that allows us to exercise that all-important generosity of spirit, an offering that will support the self-supporting church and its ministries. Here at East Rose, we share half of our offering with a community nonprofit that we support. This month, it is Our Just Future, formerly known as Human Solutions. Our Just Future helps homeless and low-income families build pathways out of poverty in East Multnomah County. If you attend online, you may donate by visiting our website and clicking the donate button, or you can scan the QR code on the screen. The gifts of the congregation will now be most gratefully received.
Spirit, Father, Spirit, in your gray hymnal number eight. I'll play it here once. Words by Albert Camus. In the midst of hate, I found there was with, within me an invincible love. In the midst of tears, I found there was within me an invincible smile. In the midst of chaos, I found there was within me an invincible calm. I realized through it all that in the midst of winter, I found there was within me an invincible summer. And that makes me happy, for it says no matter how hard the world pushes against me, within me there is something stronger, something better, something pushing back. Good morning. Oops, excuse me. Resilience is the ability to adapt well to stress. I've heard a little bit today about some of the congregation experiencing a little bit of stress. And I too, at times in my life, have gone through stress, but I've had some amazing <laughs> teachers when I was just six years old, my parents were in a car or a plane crash, and they had six children, and the doctor said my mother wouldn't live. A few months later, they said my mother would never walk again. My mother continued walking long enough to break her hip at 92 and keep walking. My mother lived through COVID at 100, and we finally lost her this year at 101. So she was my first teacher. And when asked, how did you do it? How did you learn to walk again? She told me, I just put one foot in front of the other and then did it again. So I, I learned very young, maybe it's not that hard. And then came my, uh, my <laughs> uh, current <clears throat> reason for never giving up and my, my newest teachers. These are my children. They're old now. <laughs> they, they, they both have very serious health issues. One came back from injuries more serious than my mother's. She's now a medical student. The other one has such chronic 
daily issues that we just say her full-time job is staying alive. And I watch these girls who didn't give up and have shown me and continue to show me every day you put one foot in front of the other and you can keep going. Well, several about 10 years ago when, when I was figuring if there is a God, he's discovered Xanax because things are not going well. <laughs> I actually sat and put together, crafting is one of my things that I do when I'm in stress, a toolbox with real tools that I call my resiliency toolbox. And I know everything that's in it now after 10 years. For the first few years, I, I would pull things out and look at them. They are all reminders of what I have going for me. So we're we'll going through all of that in a moment, but what I want to let you know is out um, in the lobby, I did leave these, and rather than trying to remember what's in my toolbox, there's a list out there that you can take so you might build your own toolbox. Mm. My morning prayer, the one I recite every morning, was written by John O'Donohue, and it is called The Morning Offering. It begins, I bless the night that nourished my heart to set the ghost of longing free into the form and figure of dream to go and harvest from the dark bread for the hunger no one sees. We shared a little bit today about the hungers we will let others see. But there are hungers, fears that we don't let anybody see. And those are the ones that we need tools to come back from, or to feed, I guess, to feed those, those um, hungers. Right now, I, I have to address Florida because I pulled out my sermon and was going over it, and Saturday morning I turned on the uh, news and thought, who am I to talk about resilience? At my worst time, there was still a roof over my head. I was afraid there wouldn't be, but there was a roof over my head. I knew where my papers were. I knew there was an office I could go to, and there are millions of people right now who have nothing more than my most important tool that I'll get to in a minute. Uh, I'd like to share with you a little bit of my book and this is from the chapter when I describe everything about my resiliency tool book, so, or toolkit. Uh, please remember this nasty news is uh, six years ago, I'm long beyond it. In April, I received no alimony at all. I was served legal papers instead. My ex was asking the court to relieve him of any and all financial obligation to me as I had failed to secure full-time employment after our divorce. My credit rating had somehow survived his post-divorce bankruptcy filing, but I wasn't back on my feet. It was April and I knew I could make it through July. I had one child in college. I didn't know what I was going to do. My friends had helped me so much through the divorce, I didn't want to say I've got another financial crisis possibly coming, and frankly, I was ashamed. And I think that shame is something that keeps us from sharing in the times that we most need to share. So I look at, started looking for a family law attorney, hoping to find one who would work for me, pro bono, I did. I won, and I kept going. But facing homelessness in just a few weeks at that time, I started to consider panic. Now my mom and my kids, they've taught me panic's not an option, giving up is not an option, you must have something you can go with. And that's when I started again, uh, looking at these tools and what I could do. At the time, my daughter, who was in college, we still had coming up a month before she would get back into school, and were able to find some of her dorm mates down in Oakland who were willing, her parents were willing to take her in until school 
got started. And that just left me looking for me. And I didn't want to come out being what I call, thank you, Matt, my friend who gave me this one, a soup sandwich. So in order to not be getting, uh, becoming a soup sandwich, I started calling everyone I thought may have a job lead. And if I didn't have a phone number, I sent an email. Ellen worked for the teachers union. She and I met at a rally protest for better education funding years ago. We developed a Facebook friendship as I followed her journey through her battle with breast cancer. Ellen was the first to respond to my request for comments on my resume. She straight out asked, what is going on? I told her the position I was in, that my job at the preschool didn't pay enough to live on. I might apply for a master's program just to get a student loan. You come live at my house, she said. We have a room. We talked about my staying just those last two months of summer uh, while I tried to work something out. She said, my husband's a cop. Can you pass a background check? <laughs> uh, well, I work at a preschool, and the state said I'm good enough for them, so I hope that'll be good <laughs> enough for you. <laughs> and I said, will all of this be OK with your husband? And she said, he doesn't get a say in this. You come and live with us. <laughs> Well, I went over the next day, and Ellen showed me the house, introduced me to the kids, Rocky and Estelle, and she went over a few basic rules. Now, I didn't put it in the book, but I will share. The one rule I was most impressed with was when she opened up the refrigerator and pointed to the pate and said, nobody eats pate in this house alone. If you get into the pate, you must offer it to everybody who's in the house at the moment. And I said, OK, I can come and live here. <laughs> so that was when, the, uh, so here's the end of that chapter. Just like that, I had a roof over my head and no idea what would be coming with it. So if you want to know what really came with it, you'll have to get my book. <laughs> here is, as I said, my resiliency toolkit. You can get a box and decorate it, a shoe box or whatever. Everything in here, again, is just a symbol for me. So how, whatever might be a symbol for you. Now, the first one, the most important, I think, and I think possibly the only thing some of those people in Florida have left this morning is a statement of their deepest held beliefs. At the time I was going through this very rough spot, I was attending WUF, the UU Church in the West Hills, and I was part of, excuse me, the Buddhist group. And at the time that I joined, they said, we just started studying a new book, When Things Fall Apart, by Pema Kodron. And I thought, this sounds like a place for me. And it was there and during that time that I really honed what is it that is my my most true belief. And that is what I've got to hold on to. Something I know that no matter what, that will still be inside me. Um, I call it my sledgehammer, but it really isn't a sledgehammer. It's just supposed to be a gentle reminder. All of us have something. My son-in-law was having a very hard time recently, and I asked him, you know, what what do you believe in more than anything? And he said, well, I believe I love your daughter. And I said, so if, if she died tomorrow and you lost your job, do you believe you'd still love her? And he said, yes. And I said, then that's a deeply held belief and you hold on to that, that no matter what, you have love for someone and that'll get you started. So whatever it is, for me, my deepest held belief is believe. Believe is a verb. I can believe. It doesn't matter what I believe. It doesn't matter who I believe in. I have something inside me that I can hold on to. And I really, that is my prayer for everybody who went through this hurricane, that at the very least, they have something they can hold on to. My uh, pliers. <laughs> My pliers is an invitation to a pity party. Oh. 
sometimes you just got to pull out the thorn. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, it's nasty. He done me wrong. I shouldn't have lost the job. That person shouldn't have got the raise, whatever it is. And the most important thing to put in here, your invitation to your pity party, is your end time. Now, I spoke with your church administrator the other day. We talked a little bit about this and her going away. And I said, so instead of a pity party, you go have a pleasure party. And she said, yeah, when I come back, I'll put on my big girl pants. Because <laughs> that's what we had talked about. So this is very important. Now, um, I find sometimes I want to not party alone. So I might bring my friends like Ben and Jerry with me. <laughs> Moet and Shandong might show up. I know some people really like to party with Visa and MasterCard, but that's not my style. Um, the point is, give yourself a break. Take stock of, of where you are. And then, following your pity party, after your end time, and you're ready to get back to it, you got to put on the resiliency overalls. Now, the resiliency overalls might also be known as the big girl pants. <laughs> um, I want to show you the ones I wore in my youth. <laughs> when, when I say my youth, I mean in my 30s and 40s. <laughs> but I let Superman move in, and dang, one day he did the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> So I had to come up with some new big girl pants, and I did. What I thought about is the fact that not just my children, not just my mother, but my grandmother, my great-grandmother who came across the Atlantic and, and the ones who came across the, from the east with the railroad, they all stand with me. They are all part of me. So when I now need to step into my big girl pants, I step into their big girl pants. I know this might not be a <laughs> Yes, I do wear them around the house <laughs> occasionally, but it does light, not only lighten it up, it reminds me I'm not alone even when I am alone. After the, spirit, after the ranch, we've got the uh, hacksaw. Now my hacksaw would, never does sit in here, but I, I'm using this for my item today. Because you may have a Rolodex, you may have your email contacts, I don't know where you keep your contacts and address book, but the, the wrench is you use a wrench to, to open the flow. And when there is a problem, you gotta make some contact. And what I write is you gotta make some contact and it's gotta be in person and that means using your phone, not your email. That means getting a voice on the other end. And always, I think, well, pretty much always, you're gonna get help. You're gonna get compassion if you're not gonna get help. So having a list of contacts, I have my three. There are three people I know that I would not be ashamed to say whatever if I got, you know, if I got arrested <laughs> and I had to tell somebody I need help, there are three people I know. If I got whatever happened, I did something horribly wrong. I know or something horribly wrong happened that I didn't want to share with the world. I've got some contacts and I need to make contact with them. So there's your, your hacks or your wrench. A hacksaw is meant to cut a, Cut off the bad stuff and get you going. Now a hacksaw, what I wrote down here so you'll remember what it is, it's any activity that has a predictably positive outcome, a PPO. And that means anything that you already know is gonna make you feel better. My, my little reminder for my PPO is my grand dog's bone. Nothing brings me more joy than taking that dog to the dog park and letting him get covered in mud so that I have to bathe him. <laughs> Maybe not that part. But playing with the dog will always bring me joy. Playing with children brings me joy. Uh, gardening, I didn't want to fill the box with dirt, but this morning I thought, you know, really that's what should be in here is, is my garden where I go put my fingers in the dirt. So. If you can use that to cut off where you were and move on to where you're going. 
My fire extinguisher is also a toy. It's, I don't know if it'll blow up, let's see. Good. The reason I have this, you might use a whistle or, or a, um, a baggie, but to blow something up, and the reason is when we're stressed, we rarely breathe. And the whole point of the balloon being, I don't want you to breathe. I just want you to exhale. And so we're gonna do that together and you're all gonna learn what happens if you do it. So as we take, I'll count one, two, three as we breathe in and then I'll stop and we'll exhale together big mm -hmm. and see what happens. Okay, one, two, three, breathe in. One, two, three, and exhale. Sorry. <laughs> what happened next? You just breathed in. You don't have to remember to breathe, blow, exhale, get that out, and then you're breathing in fresh air. So now when you're done, if you have a balloon, you can also do what I do, which was just make the funny noises and let it fly around the world. <laughs> <laughs> now, the level doesn't have a, I, I didn't have a small enough level to bring it in here, but it's the magic master formula. The magic master formula is something I learned ooh, way back in the 70s on how to get what you want. And it has worked for me during three major life changes. I went back to the formula and dang if this thing doesn't work. So I learned it in a, uh, a business class, a MBA program. And the speaker said, the way to get what you want is get out a piece of paper and write down three things that you want. Now, they have to be the three things you want more than anything else, so you can't just write them down. You've got to think about this a little bit. And really, from where you are and what you're facing, where is it you want to be? Write that down. Directly under that's step one. It's a three-step process, and that's simple. What do you want? The second is, what do you have to give up to get that? Now, a, a beautiful example, I think, is someone who wants more than anything to deliver babies. As a, life, as a life struggle, but they have an incredible need, overwhelming need to control their time. Well, what are you gonna do? You're going into dermatology or you're gonna give up this thing you have about time? So it's a very serious process. If this is really what you want, what do you have to give up, including self-doubt, not calling my friends, thinking this is awful and it's never gonna end, all of that. The third step in the magic level process, you, you know what you want, you know what you have to give up. The third thing is list three priorities. And for me right now, my first priority is longevity and health. So I had to put some, some thought into that. Um, once you have those things, you've planted all of it in your subconscious mind. So the actual fourth step of this isn't really a fourth step. Just put that away. Put, go put it away somewhere and watch what happens. I did it the first time. It got me back to school with my business degree. I had my family. I, I had everything that was on there and I had given up exactly, I had done exactly that formula. Did it again when um, my marriage broke up, when all of this happened. And then again, when I started writing the book. What is it I want? You know, how do I want this to happen? So what do you want? What do you have to give up to get it? What are your priorities? And put it away. And it, it works. It's a tool, I can tell you, it works. Now, the last, very last one, and I save it for last for a reason. This is my power drill. And I haven't opened this one since I made it because I know what's in here. I'm not gonna share exactly what's in here, but I wrote down on a piece of paper, then folded it all up and stuck in here, two things. In there, and I can do this without prying, in there is a description written by a very creative writer of the darkest night of my soul or more feeling words, more emotional words, more verbs in that. Uh, very short writing, 
of what the heck I was going through, and on the other side of that was a beautiful description of what got me out of it. I know it's in here. I don't have to read those words at that awful, awful time. And I know what got me out of it. All my tools. Uh, so, oops, here we go. through that part, sorry, guys. So in the end, because the, I'm just about done, making your own uh, box is another thing because it is um, doing something. It's, you're doing something. Anytime you take a step, like my mother said, put one foot in front of the other. It seems so simple, but if you can't walk, it's, it's not so simple. But wherever we are, even taking that breath, I'm not in that moment anymore. I've already moved. So just keep, keep moving. Um, I have added two new tools. Um, I know I heard somebody mention mental health today, and I don't know if you guys are aware, there is a new national mental health hotline that rolled out in August, and mental health providers are asking for this to be spread. The number is 988. It's a 24-hour mental health hotline that will have you speaking to a mental health professional. It is nationwide, 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year, so 988. Uh, the other one I just added is music and movement. Um, and the song that hit me with this was um, Creedence Clearwater Revival, you know, Put Me in Coach. I was, <laughs> I couldn't help it. I'm going, what came over me? I'm getting up and dancing. Yeah, I can be center field. I'm, well, that certainly felt good. I guess that's one, I better add that one to, to my toolbox. Because if you can't dance, you're going to uh, need all the rest of the tools. So with any new setback then, note what tools might work for you. Know what tools do work for you. You already have tools I don't know about and I didn't mention, but I bet you all can think of at least one. If you take the time now or at some point to put it all together, again, you're feeding your subconscious mind, but you also have something that you you know if you do need to pull it out, if I do need to actually hold this, I, I have something there. Now, the hurricane comes, I'm going to have to just know it's all in my head, but it is all in my head. I opened this morning with the first stanza of John O'Donohue's A Morning Offering, and I would like to close with the last two stanzas. May my mind come alive today to the invisible geography that invites me to new frontiers, to break the dead shell of yesterdays, to risk being disturbed and changed. May I have the courage today to live the life that I would love, to postpone my dream no longer, but do at last what I came here for, and waste my heart on fear no more. May it be so. Please rise in body or spirit and join us in singing our closing hymn, Every Time I Feel the Spirit, in your gray hymnal number 208, or words are on the screen. Okay, this one, as Anne said, is going to get you dancing. <laughs> so don't bother holding your hymnal. Look at the words on the screen. I want to see some dancing. I want to see some clapping. Now, I don't know if you even know this one, but you will by the time we're done. I'm going to play it through once.
Words by Brian Keeley. The chalice is now extinguished, but its light lives on in our minds and hearts and souls of each one of you. Carry that flame with you as you leave this place and share it with those you know and with those you love, and most especially with those you have yet to meet. In closing words by James Morrison, within each of our hearts, there is a most glorious light. Go forth and let its spark help you understand what troubles both you and others. Go forth and let its light of reason be a guide in your decisions. Go forth and bring its ray of hope to those in need of help in both body and spirit, that they may find healing Go forth and fan the flames of passion to help heal our world. Go forth and spread the warm glow of love, pushing back the darkness of the world. Go forth and share your glorious light with the world. We have some important announcements today. I'm gonna to start with letting um, Cynthia, our board president, make an announcement. I don't think I need to go up there. Okay. Um, <laughs> some months ago, the board approved a uh, position for RE coordinator, and I have uh, an acceptance from Tara Toller, so we will be putting her on really hard with the families. You may not see them here. They're sort of our invisible group. <laughs> but she has been working with them for some time now uh, without pay. And uh, we also have, the UUA has just put out some training and we're going to get her signed up for that. Um, the other thing I wanted to announce is uh, I wrote, I wrote a, I want to call it a blog, I wrote a piece for the newsletter and the website while ago, after I did my um, reflection. And I want to ask 
what does East Rose mean to you, and what are you willing to give back to keep it together? There are, and I know sometimes I feel like I'm, what do they call it, preaching to the choir? Because you are the ones sitting here that are usually the ones doing the work. But we have big gaps on the sign-up sheet in the hall just to make coffee. It's not that hard. Bring flowers. Look at the beautiful flowers Mary and Jean brought this morning. It really helps with the service. Mm -hmm. And then there's the unsung heroes who sign up for a cleanup. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had people coming forward now for pastoral care, but we could use some more people within the church who are willing to be folks we can reach out to. We are desperate for worship leaders. And I'm not kidding. At the time of the writing, we had four. One of them is sitting right there, Reverend Sue. One of them is right here, me. One of them is right there, Jan, worship leader. I mean, the worship team leader. And who am I forgetting? Char. Huh? Char. Char. Well, no, Char's, Char has only recently started coming back. There's one more. Um, Oh, it's, it's uh, Katie Larcel, our other community minister. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. We have to do one a month, at least. And it's too much. It's a very rewarding thing to do. And we are getting a couple of more people who are coming forward. It is, we will work with you if you've never done it before. Um, but it really is rewarding. And um, uh, so I'm up here. Um, pleading with those listening and those here to give it a try because if we don't have uh, worship leaders for the service, uh, our worship services are going to begin to look quite a bit different and shorter. Okay. That's the end of my preaching <laughs> to the choir. <clears throat> Okay, we have an important event coming up, and I have some people that are going to be sharing about that, giving us some reminders, and we'll start with Katie. Hello. Um, as you all know, we're, we have an auction coming up. Um, the 13th and the 14th will be online, and the 15th will be a party here, and that's um, not my part of it. I'm doing the online part of it. Um, the deadline has passed for getting your items in, but I'm going to extend that deadline. So um, if you haven't gotten your donations in for the online auction, and it can be anything. It can be an item that you want to remove from your home, or it could be a, it could be, yeah, let go um, of and release to the, to the wild. Um, or it could be a, uh, like maybe you want to have a game night or some kind of a party or a dinner or deliver a pie to someone's house or whatever it may be. Um, and uh, if you get, could get those to me using the treasurer at eastrose.org email address, I need a photo. And if it's something that's, that there's no photo of, like a celebration, then I need some kind of thing to represent the celebration. Um, and then uh, I would need to know um, like what you consider the minimum price should be, like the minimum bid should be. And um, so a photo and a description and the minimum price. So that's what I'm looking for. And the deadline is now um, next Wednesday. So October 5th, is that correct? Yeah, Wednesday, the 5th. Um, and then just so you know, the auction will be uh, 10 a.m. Thursday the 13th through Friday uh, the uh, 14th at 10 p.m. And um, yeah, thank you. Okay, um, I, one of the things that we are doing for the party, well, first, the party is free. We will have a basket for people to put donations in if they want. It's not required, it's just if they want to. We will be having food, and Carol will talk about that a little bit, um, and people will donate coffee, tea. We, we will have baskets that you will buy raffle tickets. Now. 
We're trying not to do the credit card, which is really hard because most people are used to that is how the only way they pay. But we really want to make it as simple as possible. So checkbooks, for those that don't know what a checkbook is, <laughs> it's a piece of, it's a, like this big, and you write your name and the amount of money and to who, and it, there, there's a checkbook. Kathy yeah. has one, yes. It still exists. <laughs> the other option is cash. Uh, and I know you probably don't know what that is either. Comes in bills, comes in, ch uh, in little coins. You can bring cash. Um, also, I am sure there's some ATMs around here and banks that you could go if you need to go get cash. You could leave the event, come back, and buy those raffle tickets for those baskets. Anyone interested in donating a basket, it could be goodies, chocolate, it could be um, uh, plants, it could be... Um, uh, there's just too many things. Books, tea, coffee, it could be games, it could be anything that you want to do. It might have a theme to it, all cat stuff, all puppy stuff, um, you know, whatever. It doesn't have to be a big basket, it could be a small basket. It's whatever you want to do. You need to contact me. Send me an email. Tell me what is going to be in that basket so I can write a little card that will go in front of it and people don't have to search, but they can just look at that and say, ooh, I want to win that. I'm going to spend $20 of raffle tickets and they're all going in that basket or I'm dividing them up in all of them and, every, and I might have, but you have the choice on what you want to win. The other thing that is going to be happening is we're going to have a dance afterwards for those that want to dance. And so we'll have coffee, we'll have tea, we're not having any alcohol. We have had alcohol in the past, we're just not going to deal with it right now. I want to make it simple, I want to make it fun, I want as many people to come as possible. And so it is going to be Saturday night, and I think the time is our Saturday afternoon, 1 to... 1 to 4. 1 to 4. The 15th. The 15th. I was thinking it was 1 to 6, but that's too long. 1 to 4. It's the perfect time to come nosh, come have fun. It, it won't be dark, so you could drive. Um, there you have it. The other thing is the Friday before, when we're having the online auction, at seven o'clock, could, I could be here earlier if somebody needs to be here earlier. We're gonna set up tables, just card tables, chairs around the card tables. We'll have some, a little decoration, a little area for dancing, and we'll leave also the chairs on the side so people can eat and enjoy festivities and talk to people also. So. Baskets, dancing, socializing. Anybody have any questions for me? I have a question. The dancing, is this a with or without partners, I'm assuming? Uh, it, is, <laughs> it is whatever you want. All right. <laughs> I, am, I am all for a group of people dancing together. The more the merrier. I'm tired of the when you were little or a teenager and all the people lined up on the wall and nobody would dance because yeah, right. they're, they don't do that so much anymore. They just get on the dance floor. <laughs> do you take the solicitations of desired dancing tunes? Yes. So people that have particular music, I, I do have somebody that said they would bring some dance music. I have a couple things, but I would love for people to bring either on Friday or the actual day of the event on Saturday um, some CDs and we will just play some music. And it could be whatever you want. Like Creedence Clearwater. Like Creedence Clearwater. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Yes. YMCA. 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 Yeah. yeah. There you go. Can we come even if we're not in like a financial position to participate in the round? Oh, yes, of course. Of course. Of course, anyone can come. It, it is open. It is open to East Rose members and friends. 
Yes. It parts of it are. That's why I'm doing. That's why I'm doing the rah rah here. Hello, everybody on the screen. And um, yes. Yes, it is. And um, we'll also need some people to help after the event to put chairs back together because we got church the next day. Most of the card tables are going to be from here. If people have a card table they want to donate. Friday night would be a good time to come and bring your card table. Anybody else have any questions? It's going to be fun. We deserve it. It's, COVID has put us so far behind for so many reasons, and that includes people coming back. Let's have a party. Let's enjoy each other. Amen. <laughs> and the whole world has. And so we decided that we needed to develop new memories with each other, happy memories with each other. So that's the purpose of the party. Anyway, I'm here, I'm in charge of the food, and um, I'm here to um, tell, uh, we, we decided keep it simple, so we're doing um, appetizers. Um, and Sue, I like salty things, Sue must like sweet things, but anyway, she, <laughs> she is um, promoting um, some sweet, you know, cookies and cupcakes and tea breads and that kind of thing. Yes. And so you can have, and you have, I put suggestions on here of what to sign up for. Be sure, be sure that you um, uh, put your phone number behind your name um, and let's see oh and then I have a place where you can create your own appetizer mm -hmm. and you uh, and or you dessert can... yep. <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> and you can um, yeah be creative about the, the sweet things too anyway <laughs> I mean I, I oh well never mind so um, and then the sign, I have the, the sign up sheet for um, uh, helping set up Friday night, 7 o'clock, the, uh, the 14th, and then helping clean up afterwards. So, again, be sure to put your phone number behind your name. Um, is there anything else, Sue? <laughs> I don't think so. I just, I just want to say that. Um, I will not be at church next Sunday because I'm um, going to be, I think it's next Sunday, Chase, uh, yeah. Next Sunday I'm preaching at Hillsboro. So I won't be here um, to do the rah rah. So I need some enthusiastic people next Sunday that are at church to do uh, on announcements. Oops. Kind of a rah rah to remind people and also to sign up. Carol's going to be here. If we can sign up today, we can sign up next week. Um, and if you forget to sign up and you show up and you're bringing some cookies or you're bringing some salty, everything needs to be like finger food. Yes. It, uh, we don't want to have forks and knives and, you know, we might, whatever. Make it easy. Yeah. So, yeah, she said in the future, um, we may go back to our big parties we had. We had about 27 or 28 of these every year um, <clears throat> before COVID. And um, so we're hoping that once again we can do this. This is the most fun time of the year. And, <laughs> and also, we, and we called it a service auction um, before. We're not doing that this time. And um, 
we ha and it, you know you can sign up for your whole social life for the whole year with these service <laughs> auctions. If if people donate things, like coming to your house or parties or dinners. Yes. 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 All right. Y'all come. Y'all sign up. Um, I have one last thing, and I had it in my brain when I was sitting there, and it has uh, escaped for a minute. Let me go sit in the chair. Just a couple more announcements. I know we're, we're running late. Um, no, that's okay. Um, see, I lost my place. Oh, today, there's an important event today. The Mount Hood UU Cluster is meeting at Nadaka Park, very close to us, from 3.30 to 6. Um, so it'll be other UU congregations from around our area. And um, I went to the last one, it was in Hood River. It was a lot of fun, a lot of really good food. So I hope that many of us can come. You had a question? Oh, it's, a potluck. it's a potluck. Yeah, it's a potluck. So yeah, bring whatever dish you want to to share. Jan, do we bring our own plates and things or is that gonna be there? Oh, that I don't <laughs> know. That's a good question. Um, Eric, had, Eric is the one that put the, um, He's reserved the spot. He's going to show up at three just to make sure everything's set and ready for three thirty. But I'm yeah, I'm not I'm not sure about the plate and silverware. Right here, yeah. Um, there will there will also be a hike on Wednesday that Eric is leading, meeting here at East Rose at nine. So if you want any more information, check your check the pedals or check in with Eric. And I'm sure there are many more announcements in the pedals, so be, be sure and always look at that every week. So um, that concludes today's service. If you're online, we invite you to, to exit YouTube and join the ca cafe conversations on Zoom. And those of you here in the chapel today, please stay for coffee, tea, and conversation.